members of council, members of the executive management, members of Senate, our inaugural this afternoon, Professor Vivian the same Ojong, family and friends of Professor Ojong, academics and professional staff, students, alumni, colleagues from higher education institutions locally and internationally, members of the faith communities, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ndantam Kize, the Deputy Vice Chancellor and the Head of the College of Humanities. On behalf of the Vice Chancellor and Principal of the University of KwaZulu-Natal, Professor Nanapogo, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the inaugural lecture of Professor Vivian Ojong. The Vice Chancellor conveys his congratulations and best wishes to Professor Ojong. Inaugural lectures form part of the university's public lecture series and may only be presented by newly appointed full professors who have been appointed in the academic schools and centers. Inaugural lectures present an opportunity for showcasing the exciting and groundbreaking work, research and teaching that is being carried out by professors in our university. Each lecture presents a significant milestone in an academic career providing official recognition of their promotion or appointment to full professorship. These lectures are furthermore an ideal opportunity for new professors to introduce themselves and to present an overview of their own contributions to their field, to academic peers, students, and research collaborators. Inaugural lectures also provide a platform for celebrating a professor's academic achievements with his or her family, friends, mentors, and colleagues. It is my pleasure to introduce the Dean and Head of the School of Applied Human Sciences, Professor Mazepo Matwane, who will now formally introduce the inaugural Professor Vivian Ojong. The Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Ndantam Kize, our inaugurant Professor Vivian Ojong, and all protocol observed, it is my great pleasure to present to you Professor Vivian Besom Ojong. Professor Vivian Ojong is a full professor in the discipline of anthropology in the College of Humanities at the University of KwaZulu-Natal in Durban, South Africa. She held the following administrative positions. From 1st April, 2017 to December 2013, she became the academic coordinator from the year one, June 2016 to 30 April 2019, she was the academic leader. She was the acting head of the School of Anthropology, Gender and Historical Studies from the period January 2008 to June 2011. In, on the 1st of May 2019 to the 31st of August 2021, she was the acting dean and head of school of social sciences at the University of KwaZulu Natal in South Africa and was appointed the dean and head of school of social sciences at the University of KwaZulu Natal South Africa from 1st of September 2021 to date. 
Professor Ojong received a BSc Honours in Sociology slash Anthropology degree from the University of Buea, Cameroon in 1997. She obtained an MA in Anthropology in 2003 and a PhD in 2005, also in Anthropology from the University of Zululand. Professor Ojong joined the Department of Anthropology at the University of KwaZulu-Natal in June 2004 as a lecturer and ascended to the position of senior lecturer in April 2007 to associate professor in January 2013 and to full professor in January 2019. Professor Ojong's research areas are identity politics, migration, globalization and diaspora studies, gender, feminism, entrepreneurship, as well as culture and religion. Her teaching interests are research methodology, policy, theoretical frameworks, migration, and globalization, as well as gender and feminism. She has successfully completed the supervision of 16 doctoral PhD and a number of master students, mentored seven postdoctoral fellows and published 52 research articles as journal articles and book chapters. Professor Ojong has examined a number of masters and PhD theses from various universities, including the University of Forte, the University of Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University, University of Cape Town, University of Free State, Walter Sisulu University. She is a member of the Pan-African Anthropological Association, PAA, Anthropology of Southern Africa, ASA, Association for the Study of Worldwide African Diaspora, ASWAT, and African Association for the Study of Religions. She is a reviewer for more than 20 high impact factor journals and guest editor for some special issues. Professor Ojong has been an invited speaker at a number of conferences and workshops in South Africa, regional, continental, and international. She has had the opportunity of giving invited talks at several universities public sector and on social media platforms. Professor Ojong is a National Research Foundation, South Africa C3 rated social scientist since 2018. Professor Ojong received the following awards. In 2008, she received the Mellon Merit Award for Younger Scholars in the Humanities and Social Sciences at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. Research Productivity Award as an Emerging Researcher for 2010. University of KwaZulu-Natal Productivity Award as an Emerging Researcher again in 2011. University of KwaZulu-Natal Research Productivity Award for the top 30 researchers in 2012 in the College of, also received the College of Humanities Staff Excellence Award for the top 10 most published uh, women in the College of Humanities Staff Excellence Award, Moral Booster Award for School of Social Sciences in 2017, the College of Humanities Staff Excellence Award for the top 30 researchers in 2018, College of Humanities Staff Excellence Award as the top 10 most published women award in 2018. The College of Humanities Staff Excellence Award, Excellence in Teaching in 2018 and an NRF rating C3 in 2018. Professor Ojong, you are now invited to present your inaugural lecture. Uh, 
Honorable Vice Chancellor and Principal Professor Nanapoko. Council and Senate members, Honorable Deputy Vice Chancellor and Head of College of Humanities, Professor Nglangdam Kize, our college executive leadership and administrative support, colleagues and students of the College of Humanities and the School of Social Sciences, family and friends. Becoming a full professor is an exciting challenge. And I cannot think of a better place to take on this challenge than in the supportive environment offered to me by the College of Humanities. My former colleagues, Professor Suzanne Leclerc Madlala, Dr. Alan Torot, Professor Pearl Sitole, and Professor Tenjiwe Meiwa were very instrumental at the developmental stage of my academic journey. My special gratitude goes to the supervisor of both my master's and PhD work, Professor Gina Bales, for guiding my thoughts and gracefully mentoring me to full academic citizenship. My colleagues, Professor Maheshwari Naidu, Professor Surya Muthi, Professor Nobute Hlongwa, and my Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Nglangla Mkize, have all contributed towards shaping what is being celebrated today. Above all, I thank the Almighty God, my Father, who is always on my side, providing all round support. I give him all the glory. I am nothing without him. The phenomenon of migration continues to take twists and turns in contemporary times. Coupled with new technologies, human movements continue to be reshaped in novel ways, and this has implications for anthropology as a discipline, particularly for the anthropological method. Perhaps one can toy with the idea of virtual societies, which are emerging out of the technological interaction of migrants who share common interests and identities. Mobility continues to reshape anthropological discourse. And although it appears to engender greater freedom, my major critique centers on the globalization of inequality, which is characteristic of present migration trends. These are affected by technological developments which have heightened the degree of surveillance and has implications for inclusion and exclusion. Anthropology as a discipline has always had an interest in human mobility, beginning with rural to urban migration and extending to international migration. Anthropologists have been fascinated by different facets of how migration reorganizes and gives rise to new forms of community. Two major strands of migration thinking have dominated the work of most anthropologists. That is, that migration is either forced due to political factors or natural disasters or voluntary, especially following economic considerations. However, this binary is being increasingly challenged as anthropologists attempt to rethink and reconceptualize contemporary manifestations of migration. This critical analysis therefore seeks to examine how mobility has reshaped anthropological discourse. The analysis also attempts to look at how technology is contributing to this reorientation of migration and perhaps offer some lens on the future implications of mobility and technology on the discipline of anthropology.
on international ethnographies and research on mobility. Perhaps, perhaps one, one, of the, one of the important facets of disruptions which anthropology has witnessed comes from the anthropological method itself. The days of anthropology is taking comfort in studying the routine day-to-day -day activities of bounded communities are long gone. And the continued trends of human mobility do not make the scenario easy for the, for the traditional anthropological method. Attached to, attachment to a place is becoming increasingly difficult among migrants, such that anthropologists must rethink and adapt their methodologies to suit the fluid nature of their populations. This calls for innovative, innovative methodologies which stretch and repackage traditional anthropological methods to ensure that they can aptly capture the facets of contemporary human condition. One way can be in international ethnographies, where anthropologists can engage in multi sided ethnographies, which capture the dynamics of migrants as they transverse between their home communities and their new homes in foreign territories. It has been argued from several standpoints that anthropologists can no longer afford to be tied down to space and homogeneity. Hage in 2005 bemoined the expensive and exhausting nature of multi-sided ethnographies as it implies the, tra the traversing of the ethnographer between two or more research sites. However, mobility and technology bring in a whole new dimension, a whole new platform for anthropological methodological experimentation. The digital footprints enable the anthropologists to capture some interesting dynamics of the movements of people and their relationships to space and things, even as they traverse trans transnational boundaries. Apajura's ethnoscapes, Apajura's ethnoscapes, can be explored further to understand the fusion between technology and mobility. Technological innovations continue to enable us to access new ways of documenting the human condition more than how we can do so through spending extend, extended periods of time in the ethnographic field. The control of bodies and mobility, which is interwoven in much of present day technological innovations are issues of interest to the anthropologist. It creates new patterns of mobility necessitated by the greater connectedness which technology brings. Perhaps, um, perhaps uh, digital ethnographies should be mainstreamed in, anthropolo in, in the anthropological migration research. On technology, modernity and community. Technology has remodeled the world of the migrant and provides crucial platforms which mediate the interactions of migrants and various places of origin. Communities with a common purpose are continuously being forged on online platforms and the instantaneous nature of, communi of communication is creating new bonds born out of easier communication. It is becoming easier to create and coordinate communities of people who share similar identities and interests, especially among diaspora communities. Nyamjo discusses the concept of conviviality as a future of migrant communities. Technological innovation is making it possible to create and coordinate migrant communities in better and more efficient ways than before. Technology does enable the survival of communities created out of convivial relationships and make it easier for migrants to navigate different boundaries which stand in the way of their migration. 
Miller and others also captured in 2016, another interesting dimension of the integration of new technologies, especially that of social media into the lives of people and communities. The way I seem to have lost my connection, but I'm back. I hope you can hear me, colleagues. Okay. So um, as I was saying before I, I, I lost my connectivity day, um, online and offline relationships are being created in ways which bring new dimensions of sociality. If the modern anthropologist's duty is to study people and their relationships everywhere, the transnational connections and virtual communities which people are part of should be interesting perspectives um, that anthropology would study. On capitalism, on capitalism, technology, and mobility. Although contemporary mobility patterns appear to engender gender, uh, greater freedoms, anthropologists have critiqued the globalization of inequality, which is characteristic of present migration trends. As people move, there is a greater disillusionment on the ability of many to move. The world is not an open bazaar where one, can, where one can simply move to another place without encountering the ugly side of territorial protectionism, which often manifests as xenophobia and sometimes as racism. One perspective explore, explores the Marxian analysis to show, to show how time mobility and industrial capitalist logic are intertwined and central to the global mobility slash immobility. Migrants are becoming cooks in the capitalist machine, only acceptable when they contribute meaningfully to the capitalist economy. Those existing on the margins face greater risks of marginalization and discrimination and, and often find themselves struggling for survival in hostile territories. While for the elite, technology enables a better experience of global openness, it is the opposite for the lower classes who find technology to be an instrument for their exclusion and their control. On technologies of inclusion and exclusion, contemporary migration patterns are affected by technological development which have heightened the degree of surveillance in a manner which has implications for exclusion and inclusion. From facial recognition to biometric identification, the parameters for increasing human surveillance are reaching new heights. Sometimes something which enables states and governments to control the flow of migrants and restrict the entry of individuals into their territories. Technology is reshaping the movement of people globally and bringing to light a crisis, a crisis of globalization characterized by greater territorial protectionism as opposed to the deterritorialization inherent 
in globalization and mobility discourses. This calls for a reconsideration of anthropological perceptions on mobility and the freedoms which modernity purports to bring. By way of concluding, I would like to, to throw some light on the future of anthropology in the context of technological advancement and global movement of people. Technology is an aspect of human culture and the anthropology deals with an in-depth analysis of this culture and its institutions. Identify how it shapes the human race with a primary focus of developing concepts and theories for the development of human societies. This is why modern scholarship, modern scholarship regards technology as an aspect of cultural anthropology. At the same time, technological advancement has a significant impact on the pattern and magnitude of migration while the global movement of people also contributes to the spread of certain technological innovation. An interrelationship in human culture requires the analytic, analytical tool of anthropology to explore its present paraphernalia and understand its future dimension for the purpose of national and global development. As a social tool, technology is not an end, but a means to an end and therefore has to be understood in the context of our cultural institutions to enable humanity to derive the best from it. The process of achieving this is not without its own intricacies and complications, and this requires the intellectual inputs of anthropologists. It has been empirically established that the technological sector has a tremendous impact on modern society, knowledge and culture, and these are among the intricacies and complexities in the, in the analytical framework of the history of anthropology. This is why it has been observed that any piece of technological design, policy, policy framework and development that is not structured within the perspective of an anthropological framework is just another instrument for increasing social inequalities in the light of the current problems of digital exclusion. The issue is not, the issue is already creating a problem that is likely to be compounded in the near future due to the increasing global population. Yet, yet anthropology has more issues to address as the beliefs and biases inherent in human culture are often impediments to the effective utilization of technological advancement. Thus, research has shown that even the internet, even the in internet systems, protocols, and, algorithm, and algorithms are designed by people who themselves have social beliefs and biases, which they unconsciously allow to creep into some programs in the system. Overall, anthropology has an even greater role to play in the future as people think of a platform where the totality of their social and physical environment can be understood with precision through the expansion of the horizon of technological innovation. Anthropology also plays a significant role in the analysis of culture of migration the challenges therein and its effective utilization for the development of humanity. As the advancement, as advancement in technology is reducing the world to a global village, the global movement of people is taking, the global movement of people is taking on new dimensions. This is further compounded 
by an increasing glo global population, all of which demonstrates that the relevance of anthropology in the search for appropriate future paradigms and strategies that can be employed to utilize global migration for societal development is not an issue of controversy. Its methodology of studying home communities as a means of identifying intricate link between grassroots life and migration, partly through a critical questioning of the gap between the personal and the political, as well as that between the familiar and the strange, are considered crucial for addressing the future, for addressing the future as an increasing human population fuels cross-border migration amidst a widening horizon of technological innovation. For instance, the government of most countries have been compelled to develop an interest in transnational migration as they can no longer afford to ignore its practical effects on social and economic activities. Overall, if we are thinking of a future where technology and migration as aspect of human culture are dictated and utilized by humanity for its own development rather than metamorphizing into an idol for enslavement, then anthropology is amongst, anthropology is amongst the academic fields that own the future. on considering anthropological futures as I conclude. Mobility continues to undergo significant changes, some of which are new, while some seem to be a reincarnation of old patterns and experiences. It is also evident that technologies are always transforming and influencing huge structural changes in human societies. The phenomenon of migration is one such area which has been re-engineered by disruptive technologies in various ways. These include greater communication, greater surveillance, and a heightened availability of information. All these dynamics, all these dynamics have a ripple effect on the anthropological method as we try to adapt ethnographic methods to the changing fields of research. Numerous challenges and opportunities can be encountered while anthropologists continue to exert their influence and restructure their knowledge, methods, and theorizing in the new experiences of mobility. These are the references. And I, I thank you. I thank you all for listening. I really want to take this opportunity to thank my, my five sons. My five sons, I recall while I was doing my PhD, they were still very young. While I was doing my PhD, I recall the boys running around and asking me questions which, even though I tried to provide answers for, they were not able to understand and I could not appropriately explain to them why mommy is so busy. Um, I recall vividly the second one, I think at that time he was about maybe 12 years, 12 or 10 years. He said to me, mommy, I see that you are too busy. Is there anything that I can do for you? And I just laughed. I'm grateful. I'm grateful to God for this wonderful voice who are men now, John the firstborn, Jonathan the second, Joel the third, Prince the fourth, and George the fifth son. I'm grateful for, for all the, the, the support and understanding that I received from them throughout my studies. I just like colleagues to know, colleagues and friends and families to know that I actually had all my children during my years of study. <laughs> and it has been an exciting journey. I've had, I've had friends. They became friends as a result of them being colleagues. Some I'm not able to mention here, 
but they've ended up being families to me. And because I'm an orphan, I don't have parents. So these, these people I work with, they mean more than colleagues to me. We are very close. And I thank you all. I, I see that Professor Susan Lectek Madala and the and the and the and the daughters, they are attending all the way from the US. I thank Professor Pes Tole. I see you are online. I thank Professor Tenjue Meyiwa once more. I thank my colleagues. I have I have others who are also a part of the School of Social Sciences at the moment. They were they were once my students. I, I, I must say that working with them, supervising them as students and some of them as postdoctoral students and seeing them grow, as I grow uh, as a scholar, it's, it's really, it's, it, 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 it really, it really brings me fulfillment. They are all here. There's Dr. Jenna Mutuki. There is um, Dr. Mabui Gumede. There's uh, Dr. Balungile Zondi. There, there is a, a, a John Mahandu. There are many of them. Most of them are, are even part of the leadership of the School of Social Sciences, which I had. I want to thank you especially for giving me the opportunity and opportunity to, 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 to mentor you and also the space for me to grow in my leadership and my mentorship. I thank the supportive environment of the School of Social Sciences, the administrative staff, we are, we operate more like a family. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful to the College of Humanities. All the deans of the various schools are very supportive. They have contributed in big and small ways in celebrating what we, we now see as some kind of achievement. If becoming a full professor is an achievement, then they are part and parcel of it. My students, some of them are here. They are still in the pipeline. Some are attending from different places. Thank you all for your support. With that, uh, Deputy Vice Chancellor, once more, I thank you. I thank you for being part and parcel of this academic journey. I thank the two previous deans before me. Professor uh, Stephen Mutula, he's also uh, in, uh, attending. I also thank once more uh, Professor Surya Muti, who gave me the room to develop. Why allow me allow me to to discover my own form of leadership? And uh, thank you for all the support. Thank you so much, colleagues. Thank you, Prof. I hand it over to you. It is my pleasure to take the podium again to deliver the vote of thanks. I want to begin by thanking Professor Vivian Ojong for sharing with us today, but also for delivering a lecture in a very, very passionate manner. As UKZN, we are very proud to have you as a distinguished member of our university community. We are truly grateful to you for the wisdom you have shared with us today, touching on some very important topics, important not only for the university, but also for the continent at large and indeed the global community. The College Management Committee appreciates your leadership. Many will agree with me that the School of Social Sciences is one of the leading and most viable postgraduate schools in the college and indeed the university. And this is thanks to your leadership as well as the leadership of those that came before you and all the colleagues, professional and academic, who are part of this special community. We are also thankful to your family, and you mentioned in particular your five sons. And I am sure 
they must have found it very hard to have you as a mother who was doing homework every day and wanting to finish all the books in the library rather than paying 100% attention to them. But I am convinced that today they are fully aware of the significance of the hard work that we have put into your career, which, which I am sure they are very proud of. Uh, to the uh, family of Professor Ujong, thank you for supporting her along this journey, which has got many trials and tribulations. Today's lecture has been attended by many delegates, many of whom have, uh, have had a telling contribution towards the development of the career of Professor Ujong. I'm not going to mention them by name, lest I omit some important ones, but they are here nationally and internationally. We thank you for celebrating Prof. Ojong's successes with us today. Finally, I would like to thank the Management Committee of the School of Social Sciences, which is one of the biggest and most complex schools in the college. And as a result, it's not an easy school to lead but we have risen to the challenge and the school continues to be one of the best uh, within the university. Professor Ojong's College uh, Management Committee, uh, we thank you for the support that we have given to Professor Ojong, the School Management Committee, and the entire community of the University of KwaZulu Natal. We thank you for providing an intellectual home to our inaugurant, Professor Ojong. To the corporate relations team, ably led by Ms. Norma Zondo, Ms. Pamela Adams. To the registrar, Dr. Kathy Cleland, I see she's here together with her team and many others who have played an important role behind the scenes to ensure the success of yet another flawless inaugural lecture. We thank you immensely. Members of the community who have been uh, with us here today, we thank you for your support. With these words, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you all and may you go in peace. Thank you.